Well, my name is Brandon Harvey. I'm a research and teaching assistant in the Agricultural Systems Management Division at the University of Missouri. I'd like to uh, first start out by uh, <clears throat> acknowledging my contributing authors to this paper of uh, Dr. Ting Lim, uh, who is an assistant professor uh, at in the Agricultural Systems Management Division, and Kevin Rohr, uh, who is an engineer with Martin Machinery. All right, the purpose of the project um, is to establish a pilot scale on the farm anaerobic digester. Um, basically, what we're looking at here is to evaluate the potential renewable energy production, uh, manure management, economic viability, and odor control of such anaerobic digestion systems. Uh, the purpose, uh, again, the research will provide information for small to medium sized farmers seeking viable energy alternatives, practical manure management practices, and air quality improvements. So a little bit of a background about the University of Missouri Swine Farm. It's located approximately five miles southeast of campus. Uh, it consists of two barns, one for research and one for teaching. Uh, directly west of the swine farm, we have a trailer court. Um, just directly west of that, too, is an elementary school. On the east side, we have several nice new homes that are uh, going up. Uh, this outside is uh, surrounded by the University uh, Farm, Row Crop Farm and on the north uh, is undeveloped land. So Columbia seems like it's expanding quite a bit and towards our farm uh, as well. So today we're gonna to talk about a little bit of construction details from the finishing barns uh, to the valve control and manhole uh, systems, uh, the dual tank design, uh, heat exchanger, gas systems, the water heaters and the control panels. Um, just as a disclaimer today, um, when we submitted this abstract, we were really hoping for some uh, details about our research and all. Um, unfortunately, with a uh, delay in progress, we're just going to talk about the overall system today. So this is our basic layout of our digester system. Um, we have our finishing barns, which uh, feed into our valve control box, which will either divert the manure from the uh, barn either to our existing lagoon or drop it over here to the manhole. Uh, to our chopper pump, which sends it back to the digester, and the process continues from there. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about here is our finishing barns. Um, the finishing barn itself is 136 by 42. Um, there's four confinement rooms. Uh, we expect to house about 85 hogs per room, um, ranging from 50 to 250 pounds. Uh, we're going to make the assumption that each hog produces about 1.1 gallons of manure per day. Um, and we also have about an eight foot deep pit. Um, the cool thing about our barn is we have a little bit of design flexibility here. Um, the system uh, demonstrates a self scraping system, uh, which was put in place. Um, and then we have a plug right here that will just pull the plug and kick our uh, scraper on and let all the uh, machinery do the hard work for us. So moving on from our research bar, we're going to talk about our valve control box and manhole system right here. Um, as we said, we have the depiction right here. Uh, here's an AutoCAD rendering of what we're looking at from the side view. Uh, we have our main distribution line here. Uh, this valve controls whether it either goes to uh, this valve right here or it'll continue on to our lagoon that's existing on the farm already. Um, if we trip this uh, to close it, we'll uh, divert the manure. Um, into this manhole system, which is about 15 foot deep. Uh, we have about um, 10 foot of head right here, um, and then a chopper pump down here that will chop everything up, send it up to a schedule 40, uh, three inch pressure line that fits up to our digester. Down here we have uh, the picture of during construction uh, below grade. Um, part of the uh, process here is we wanted to get the construction cost uh, as low as possible. So we recycled uh, materials as much as we could. And right here, we already have an existing uh, box that we use for another farm. Um, this right here is a finished grade um, project after it's completed. Uh, the only thing that's not shown is our uh, man lock uh, to lock out the, uh, the manhole itself. So uh, since we have that uh, housing development directly to the east or to the west, we didn't want anybody coming into the farm after hours and messing around. Um, so. We try to make it as safe as possible. All right, now uh, we talked about the valve control box or the manhole system. We're going to talk about our digester system, which is encompassed inside a greenhouse. 
Uh, the digester itself uh, consists of three 2,500-gallon fiberglass reinforced tanks. Um, we have one that acts as a, a mixing tank where all the incoming manure is held and mixed, and then it'll be uh, pushed uh, to either one or two of the digesters themselves. This adds for the flexibility of a single stage, two stream, parallel replication experiment, or we can just do a dual stage, single experiment, um, depending on how we, uh, or what we're looking at as far as research goes. Um, whenever it comes time to drain manure, we have um, a heat exchanger that the effluent will be discharged through. Uh, whenever we pull manure from the pits themselves, we'll run it through the uh, heat exchanger to help warm up the uh, the incoming manure, so it's not shocked when it comes into the uh, the, or the mixing tank itself, so everything's kept warm. Uh, the flexibility of our system here, too, for the heat exchanger is we're able through a set of uh, valves to shut off um, one end and be able to flush it uh, back and forth. That way, if we have any solid settle that uh, clogs uh, our system, we can uh, flush it, back flush it to, to make everything work. Um, this is a picture of our uh, fiberglass tanks on the inside. Uh, this one specifically is one of the digester tanks. The digester tanks and uh, the mix tanks are the same nominal measurement and the same material. The only difference is that uh, the digesting tanks themselves have PEX heating to uh, surrounded around there, or water is circulated to keep the digester at a mesophilic temperature of 35 degrees Celsius um, for continuity of our digestion process. Uh, we also have a nozzle mixer, uh, which is kind of hard to see down here. And then we have an anti-foaming uh, sprayer, which is on the upper end of here, which is not pictured. Again, going back to our uh, overall digestion process uh, slide here. And then we're going to move into our uh, gas systems themselves. So gas is produced in all three of these tanks. It's delivered down to an iron sponge system, which is depicted right here. It's constructed of about an 8 inch structured steel. Uh, it was by, manufactured by Martin Machinery out of Lakeland, Missouri. And then we have a picture of media here as well. So, as a biogas goes through the iron sponge, it is pushed down uh, through this line right here, which is going to act as a condensate line. Uh, basically, it's about 700 feet of um, two inch schedule uh, 80 uh, pipe that we're hoping to draw off the moisture. We have a condensate trap down through here uh, that we're trying to pull the moisture away. Uh, then it'll continue on to a biogas bladder here um, where it's stored until we need it. Uh, this item right here is our blower, which is going to uh, supply the uh, pressure to either the Modified or to the modified water heater itself, um, which you can see right here. I think they said this uh, particular item was around $4,000, um, uh, which they were able to retrieve. I'm not sure who the manufacturer was on that. So the biogas bladder itself is depicted right here. Uh, it's rated out of a biogas uh, plastic. Uh, the finished dimensions when it's inflated is 12 foot by 15 foot by uh, 5 foot. We're going to house it in a wooden structure just outside of our greenhouse here, um, just to make things a little bit more safe. Um, and then we're uh, going to uh, weight the, uh, the bag itself with either uh, uh, concrete and then uh, uh, some plastic pipe or uh, sandbags, which is ever easier and cheapest to uh, use for maintenance purposes. All right, water heaters. Uh, we have one that's a biogas rated water heater that I mentioned earlier that we're going to run um, uh, at most of all the time. And then we're going to back up natural gas water here uh, for the time so we can. Uh, these are uh, biogas. So we're going to assume that one hog produces about 2,000 BTU uh, methane per day. So at 100 hog, that's 340,000 BTU. Our maximum demand on our uh, Water heater itself is 40,000 BTU. So, in a worst case scenario, if we were pushing the water heater at, at its full maximum, uh, we'll have about an 8.5 uh, hours of runtime. Uh, so, that's not going to cover it in the winter time. So, we're going to then use natural gas to supplement when needed 
Um, we're also using natural gas to uh, use the heater in the greenhouse itself. The control system is pretty cool. Uh, it's not really a great picture here, uh, but it shows everything we had in the previous slides uh, with respect to the um, illustration. Um, but it's touch screen, so we can go in there and touch on any one of these uh, systems and hotel us inputs. Um, we can touch whatever input we want uh, as far as uh, in closer up detail, the digester we want to, fix tank, etc. Um, the drawback of this is it's not very glare resistant, which is why it's a terrible photo. Um, but we're going to get a new, uh, new one here in the next uh, coming weeks. It's about a 14 inch panel touch screen that's uh, resistant to glare. The other thing that's really cool about our digester system and our control panel is that it's connected to the internet. So if we don't want to make it out to the swine farm during the day, we can uh, operate it from our computers at our offices on campus. Here's a picture of our control panels uh, in progress of being constructed. Uh, here's the gas of it itself. Um, this is the uh, panel that I was just telling you about or showing you from the previous slide, along with emergency stop st stations so we can shut down the operation if anything were to go wrong. On the back side, we have VFDs, uh, variable frequency drive controllers, uh, and those are to control the uh, speed on um, our pumps throughout the entire system. And then our greenhouse, again, we talked about minimizing the construction cost. So we re renovated uh, an old sorting pin area, uh, cut all those off, and then constructed everything off top of that. So what we learned during the process is the design and implementation of an anaerobic digester is uh, complex and pretty time consuming. Uh, we also realized that significant consideration needs to be given to the uh, bar manure capacity, uh, the maintaining manure freshness and solids content, and project management. I think we had a variety of uh, five different conglomerates um, working on this project between our construction crews at the farm, uh, Dr. Linda, myself, um, the contractor out of uh, Latham, Missouri, um, and the people who built the greenhouse. So it was a, a pretty big project and pretty difficult to coordinate everything to make it line up like we wanted to. Originally, we were hoping to run our system back in October, and it looks like uh, we're going to start running here in May, finally. So for future plans, uh, we're currently awaiting startup, as I said. On May 1st uh, this year, we're basically waiting for our uh, newer volatile solids content uh, to determine our loading rate. Since uh, the hogs are coming in at about 50 pounds and even about 250 to 250 pounds, the manure characteristics will differ uh, greatly. And uh, we're trying to line up and figure out the best loading rate uh, to maintain continuity during the digestion process. And right now, once we get back from uh, this conference, we'll actually. Uh, start pumping water throughout the entire system, making sure we don't have any leaks or anything like that that's unforeseen. Nobody wants to have to tear apart something that's covered manure and we'll fix it. Um, so our future plans, uh, we're going to improve upon the design efficiency of our heat exchanger. Right now it's only about a 20 foot heat exchanger. It's not insulated, so the relatively efficient efficiency there is questionable. Uh, we're also going to uh, work on the effects of feedstock characterizations, uh, as I talked about with the uh, different uh, uh, weight of the animals, per se. Uh, the, the manure is going to change quite a bit. Uh, we're also going to work on uh, co-digestion on uh, different feedstocks, and then also feedstock pretreatment on biogas production. And then we're also going to work on characterizing the greenhouse gas emissions from untreated manure and the anaerobic digestive treatment on our farms. So in summary, today we talked about the purpose of the project, project design and construction, what was learned and our future plans. And at this time I'd like to acknowledge the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources and the NU Commercial Agriculture Program for being the main benefactors for this project, as well as Dr. Tim Sosransky and Dr. Joe Zulovich. Also I'd like to acknowledge the University Field Operations for all their building this uh, project and all the times we call them going, oh, we just thought of this, uh, please come out and help us. So with that, is there any questions?
Do you have any provisions for the solitary in the tanks that you plan on just keeping them in suspension? We're going to try keeping everything in suspension um, with our mixers. Um, we're going to feel that that can be done with the uh, the pumps that we have in place right now. So this is sized to handle just one of those barns. Uh, currently, we have it sized uh, for um, uh, these two rooms right here because they have the self-scraping system. Uh, these themselves are just a flat deep pit, so uh, getting the manure out of these would kind of be tricky and a pain. So it's just easier to run with these two. Why did you decide on using iron sponge for the image to us? Basically, it was cheap. And that was uh, the main driving force on it. What's that? Do they burn well? Yep. You mentioned pre treatment technology. What are you looking at there? Um, that's a little bit further down the line. Uh, I doubt we'll be involved with the project once it gets to that point in time. Uh, my thesis is more or less on the startup and getting everything operating and the uh, operational system of this particular system, so I can't really speak to what our future plans are for installing that system later. Mark, the machinery was involved, there's no engine? There's no engine. Um, we're not going to produce enough energy to really burn the uh, burn it or produce electricity. In fact, we're just going to recoup all the energy we can into uh, the digesters to keep them at the mesophilic temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. What we have, or what, we, what is extra, will be either burn off through radiant heat or will flare it off. More or less, we're not too particularly interested about energy production as far as electricity goes, as much as the odor of issues. Are you managing the gas pressure in the digestion They're going to be through a check valve system, I believe, is what we have. Um, and then it's going to push into this line. 